Hi, well back again and today we're going to have a look at what non-routine problems look like. So this is about theory versus reality. Um, I'm Dr. Heather Stewart and again I'm coming to you from the Gold Coast campus, Griffith University. Non-routine problems, where do we start? So first of all we're going to start with a definition. We can have a look at the reality of real world, the real world. Um, what can be changed? What can we change? What we can't change? And then we're going to have a brief look at causal efficacy and bounded rationality before we finish and hopefully you'll have an idea of what non-routine problems are starting to look like. So a definition. Problems that include real life situations but they need higher levels of interpretation. There's no obvious solution and it might require multiple problem solving strategies. So non-routine problems are challenging and interesting, both at the same time. They encourage a shift from general to abstract thinking and it deepens and extends our understanding. This is supposed to actually help us with that problem solving and it's important in the technological complexities of our demanding business world. So it's very important to try and understand non-routine problems and possible ways that we can look at them. So the reality of real world problems. Well, quite often there's variance, lots of variance in what's actually happening. They can be novel, so unique, um, it's, which makes them, we haven't seen them before, so they're quite different. So they can quite often be emergent problems, something that's emerged out of, new, out of a newness, a new technology, a new situation. Um, we look at the patterns, quite often they're poorly structured. We don't understand them because we haven't seen them before, so they're complex. Um, the rules are different, uh, so we need different conceptualising on it. And these conceptualisations might need those different ways of looking at that man management problem. So those difference, that newness. Um, we're going to have a look at time constraints. Quite often those variants are where time constraints come in and we need that original thinking because these are new problems. So the reality of real, pro real, real world problems, um, we're looking at non-routine problems. They're original, they're new, they have lots of variants, they're novelty, they have that novelty element to them and they're quite unique. We haven't seen them before. So we need to look at what we can change and what we can't change. So the information at hand, Okay, what information we actually get is really important as to how we deal with that problem. So sometimes that information isn't forthcoming. Sometimes it's a lot of it. It's very hard to deal with the amount of information. So you've got the whole continuum of lots and lots of information versus minimal information. Um, we need to look at the opportunities. What opportunities can these non-routine problems ac actually present? Instead of looking at them as uh, something that we can't resolve, maybe we can look at them through the opportunities that they present. Engaging stakeholders is quite significant when we're looking at non-routine problems and this allows us to give different perspectives on what's actually happening. So when you've got a non-routine problem, Involving others to actually help you with it. The people that actually are in contact with that problem. They could be your customers, they could be your employees, they could be your suppliers. Um, it could even be people that you, you actually, your competitors as well. So looking at those non-routine problems and engaging the stakeholders can actually help you look at the, the potential of those problems and what, how to actually overcome some of those challenges. So quite often, a non-routine problem is similar in that it has nested problems. So it's one thing leads to another. So you might have a, a flat tire on the way to work but um, and the flat tire gets fixed but then the next problem is that you've got holes in your, your new work pants so you might have to go home and get changed and then when you go home and get changed you realize that another problem is there. Um, you forgot to turn off the iron um, and so you've got a, a hole in the next lot of clothes that you've, you've got there. So these nested problems can be, then that's a crazy example, but it can be where there actually one thing leads to another and the problem keeps on going. And they're nested, there's sub-problems upon sub-problems. So what you can't change when you've got incomplete or unknown or undefined information. 
So that information is a bit lacking in its con its complexities and the, the challenges is understanding that. So one of the big problems we have with non-routine problems is the restrictions and the constraints. So time is a significant restriction and also a constraint. How much time you've got to actually solve that problem? If it's something that's actually time restricted where you, need, you have a, a very tight framework on it, then those problem solving techniques need to be actually accentuated and accelerated. Possibly you, have, you can buy yourself time. So looking at those restraints and restrictions of time, understanding that time framework through resources. So the money, your employees, um, do you need contractors? Uh, the understanding of that problem, how much understanding you can actually have as can be some of the restrictions. Your political restrictions too on what you can actually do with the problem and that could be legal or ethical. So there's lots of things that you need to look at when you're looking at non-routine problems that you can change and also identify the things you can't change and working within that to look at the other opportunities. Causal efficacy. Uh, this is about the power to bring about a state of affairs to accomplish something, to cause something to happen. So it's actually that, that efficacy, that efficiency and that efficacy of a cause. So we need to conceptualize it, justify it, turn it around, look at it different ways. Um, look at those different points. You've heard me talk about crystallization before. So looking at something from a different view, looking at it from different angles, looking at the different ref refractions, reflections, things like that. And that helps us come up with new ideas. Another theory that's actually linked to non-routine problems is bounded rationality. And this actually impacts how we look at a non-routine problem. So it's about our decision making when it's restricted by the information, the cognitive limitations, which is our thoughts, how we understand it, our knowledge, and of course the time. So the implications that decision making by humans is inherently flawed due to reason shortcuts leading to suboptimal mapping of problem solving. So it is our inherent nature to quite often go for a solution, a knee-jerk reaction, and we, go, we cut corners. We don't take the time to look at a problem and actually tease it apart to look at the more optimal situations. And this is called satisfying. Okay, so that's in opposition. It's supposed to optimizing or maximizing for the best achievable outcome. So it's a satisfactory decision. It's not one that's, it's not the best decision. So we actually cut corners and we end up with a satisfactory decision. Um, it's often a familiar or an unopposed or trouble free and safe resolution. So it's something that we've, we know, something that we understand. And perhaps we just go, you know, if you think about groupthink, it's something where if something all agrees upon it, upon it, then we go with the flow. We go with the group and we don't actually oppose it. Um, trouble free. If you're going to resolve a problem and you, you're short on time, then possibly going to cut corners because you want the most trouble free solution and the safe solution. So when we look, um, at non-routine problems. Uh, this is a bit of an example with the blind men and an elephant. And this fable is actually told in many different religions and slightly different. But anyway, this photograph is actually of the, the Thai elephant and it's a group of blind men that are actually put in front of an elephant and told to actually identify what's in front of them by feeling. So they can't see, they're just feeling. So each person, each blind person that's actually looking at this elephant and this fable comes also, it can be a group of people in the dark looking at an elephant, but each person is going to be feeling and understanding a part of that whole. So it's very much that you're actually looking at only part of it. So when you actually look at that non-routine problem, perhaps you're only looking at part of that. So to actually look at that whole elephant and understand it is completely different to looking at just a part, which is all that you might see. So when you're actually looking at that bounded rationality um, and satisfying, perhaps we're just looking at the tail of the elephant. Perhaps we're just looking at a leg of an elephant and not looking at the whole elephant. Okay. So in summary, we've had a definition and we've looked at the issues of reality, what we can change and what we can't change. So understanding those limitations and challenging them, 
looking for those opportunities, looking for the potential that's there. We've had a brief look at causal efficacy and bounded rationality. And of course, we've applied the elephant par parable to that. So different sources and different views. The more that we can, the better we can approach those non-routine problems. This is really important in understanding that through those different sources, we can optimize our problem solving. Thanks for listening and look forward to talking to you next time.